Coming to Pride was such an empowering event for me, and it was just amazing to see all these people who um, had just who had been through the journey I'd been through. I suspect Pride's most important to people who've never been on it before, in the sense that it's one of those moments that you go and you go, "Wow, I'm not alone." I was mixing myself in my own community. You know, believe in the same things. We act the same way. We, we do things all together. So. I feel some sort of freedom and relaxed in the pride. Well, wasn't it originally about, um, less about celebrations and more about the sort of movement of equality? Because now it feels it's a, a lot about um, just partying. Pride is a great celebration and everybody is full of fun and having a wonderful time. But behind it all, there is a serious message that's been there from the very start. It's us, us saying we have a right to exist. We're gaining equality, but there's still such a long way to go for people to genuinely be accepted equally within society and not just sort of, you know, legally being allowed to do the same things. They're still not feeling completely accepted. The most difficult thing to remember in amongst the booze and the friends and the fun is that it's not very long ago that actually all this was illegal. Be thankful that you weren't born like I was early in the last century. I didn't know what it was, uh, but I had these feelings that I wanted to dress as a girl, I wanted to be a girl. In those days, they had a list of everyone that was gay in the locality. And if you were on that list and you happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, you go before a magistrate, you were automatically found guilty. I got married and had children. It didn't go away, it just was there always. It wasn't a day goes by without me thinking about this. When I thought to myself, George, come on, I spoke to myself, you lived a lie for 40 years of your adult life. It's about time you stopped. Of course, it had to be repressed because society at large wouldn't accept anything like that in any form. Finally, c coming out was terrifying and it took a lot of determination on my part to do so. But with gay pride and the applause and the shouts of, of approval and bravo, how could I not feel wonderful for the first time in my life? Being able to transition completely and properly in every respect, there's only one word that describes it, euphoria, <laughs> absolute euphoria. I took the bull by the horns and, and became the oldest gay in the village. It's a, a release into a, re, into a world that you only imagined up to then that you could enter. I think it's very important to remember that even though we're having a good time, we're enjoying ourselves, we're drinking, we're dancing, we're meeting friends, we need to think about all the other gay people across the world who don't have the opportunity to, to come out and be open about their sexuality. There is a big contradiction in this country between the way in which we treat our own gay citizens and the way in which we mistreat asylum seekers who are gay. I came to the UK because I'm running away from persecution in Uganda. Only can I come from Uganda. I was put in a, in a prison uh, just because they thought I was promoting homosexuality. In my home, my family totally rejected me. I had scarlet burns all over my body, fresh wounds. I was really, really afraid to live there in Uganda. That was what was in my mind that. If they don't kill me, I'll kill myself. We are very, very bad at accepting asylum seekers from other countries where they are in danger. I had a bad experience at the interview at the home office. I felt some sort of homophobic reaction from the interviewer. And what we do is we ask them to prove that they are gay. From the immigration, the first person you get contact with who is going to support you when they tell you you're not gay, 
something I see as discrimination because I'm black, I can't be gay. And then I said, I'm seeking asylum because I'm running away from persecution from Uganda because of my sexuality as a lesbian. As I was saying that, she was writing, looking down, when I mentioned as a lesbian, she looked at me and said, do you know how many I've heard of about that today? You don't know even if these people you're talking to are human being or not. Because the question they're asking, they don't make sense whatsoever. I did the interview and it's been one year now, so I'm in the process of waiting. So I lost trust um, in the system, I lost trust in everything. Well, there's a fashion at the moment that sort of says here in the UK, we're up, we're done. You know, all the boxes have been ticked, we're over. And I don't think that's true. I just think the thing has changed. For me, it's about not so much at the moment this country, it's about abroad. Even if I'm not being granted asylum, I will continue fighting for my rights as an activist of a gay community. Homosexuality is still criminalised in nearly 80 countries around the world. Like I say, I come from Jamaica, there is no gay pride. It's, you know, if you try and organise one, it's not going to happen. More than half of these countries are members of the Commonwealth, which is an association of nations that has a charter which pledges commitments to human rights and personal freedom. There's nothing for us back home. Nothing. It is absolutely outrageous that 80% of Commonwealth nations criminalise same-sex relations. Here in Britain, it's important us to be seen that we know we're not going to be afraid, that we are here, and you're not going to deny our existence. Something very interesting is happening in the world. And it's easy to focus on the negative, to see the anti-homosexual bill in Uganda, the way in which President Putin is behaving, to use but two examples. And it's easy to look at that terrible negativity and draw from it only a negative conclusion. But ironically, the reason that they're being so conservative and so reactionary is that we're growing. The genie's out of the bottle. There are activists now in countries where 10 years ago you wouldn't dream of there being activists. And so this repressive reaction is actually a reaction to increasing power, increasing visibility. So in a sense, what's happening in the world is the emergence of a really global gay movement. And that's very exciting. Suicide rates amongst people who are transgendered or would be transgendered and can't be are very, very high. They're 16 times higher than any other group of people who are susceptible to suicides. Trans people don't feel safe in LGBT community spaces. But it's not a problem that's exclusive to trans people. A lot of bisexual people don't necessarily feel safe in LGBT spaces. Uh, their sexualities get questioned by their gay and lesbian brothers and sisters. I often do feel excluded because automatically, straight away, anyone assumes that your sexuality is either gay if you're in a relationship with a female, or, well, for, for me, or straight if I'm in a relationship with males. People that aren't so familiar with the LGBT community often ask me just quite um, odd questions, you know, like, are you really bisexual? Before anything is said, it's always assumed that you're gay, you're straight. No one ever assumes that someone's bisexual. It's important to me at Pride that we welcome each other, that we take care of each other, and that we stand up for each other. The whole LGBT um, community mainly gets grouped into one label of homosexual. We want to make being transgender, being uh, effeminate for a man or masculine for a woman, uh, a normality in life and accepted everywhere. Pride is the time for us to stand together as a community because united we stand and divided we fall. In the last four years, five years, I think th things are shifting. I've seen many uh, black people engaging in, in prides all over England. Things have changed for the better, but it, there's still a lot more improvement to be had. I don't ask for extra rights, but I want equal rights for, for everyone.
So if others can celebrate, yeah, me too. I have the right to celebrate. Our kids are not born racist, sexist, homophobic. Children from a very young age, they pick up very quickly, not to mention the words lesbian, gay, bisexual, because they, they hear it from around them. It's, it's like a subconscious thing. We are not yet at a point where we are comfortable talking about different sexual orientations and gender identities. Coming out of school was quite difficult because there weren't many people that were accepting in my year because someone else came out as lesbian in my year as well and they got severely bullied for it. So I didn't feel it was a very safe place to do it. I want to see teachers using the words <laughs> within their lessons. They just gave us the definitions of LGBT and then just left it at that. They didn't say there's all different kinds of gender identities or different sexual orientations or there's places you can go for support. Like, they didn't offer enough information. Because there will be a child in that lesson. They will hear a teacher mention the word lesbian and gay, bisexual, trans, transsexual, uh, transvestite, intersex, all these words, and they were like, oh, I feel represented. Oh, that must be OK if that teacher's saying those words. We are comfortable with talking about different faiths, um, different cultures, uh, different genders and disabilities, but we're not yet in a point in our schools where we are totally comfortable with talking about different sexual orientations and gender identities. I know people that have come out to their families and they're like, oh, I don't, I don't want to know what that is because they don't understand. So I think if everyone understood everything properly, coming out wouldn't be a problem to anyone. That's the whole journey to inclusion that we all need to go on from this point to reach that utopia where we are all being treated equally and fairly. I think the world would be a different place.